Okay, we are back. I'm very happy to have on the Goldstein on Gelt show, Judy Carter, who you maybe have seen her in the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, on CNN and CNN, but not, in fact, as a financial commentator, but rather from the standpoint of comedy. Judy is an international keynote speaker and, and speaking coach, and she teaches a lot of business people about bringing humor into the business place. Judy, is that really a good idea? Well, it depends who your target is of the joke. Um, I, here's the first rule of comedy. Never poke fun of the person signing your check. Uh-uh. <laughs> Bad move. Even if they tell you, I once had a, uh, did a speech at a, a financial company. They go, oh, our CEO loves to, you know, his hair like Elvis, do something about that. And he's really short. And that was early in my career. And um, <laughs> I learned very thing. quickly. Don't. <laughs> All right. So when when does it make sense to uh, to begin using comedy? Or can well, we say humor? Because comedy maybe is a little bit frightening to some people because they say I'm not a comedian. But humor, I think, is something we can all develop. Well, here's the thing: if if you aren't getting people to laugh when you speak, you are probably boring them to death. You know, it's that death by PowerPoint. I had a, a, a CPA uh, accountant come to me, and her thing was that she wanted to get new clients and sell product. And she thought, oh, she'd give these free speeches. And afterwards, everybody would run and buy your product. Well, they were running, yeah, out the door when she spoke. She was so boring. She would be talking about ROI, and I'm a CPA, and the P&L, and nobody gave an SHIT. Because here's the thing. It's you're not your data that makes you interesting, we all can get data, all right? Anybody can get on the internet and find data. What makes people want to listen to you and also buy your stuff and hire you is if you have a sense of humor. Because if you speak and you don't, you know, people just then feel like poking their eyes out with a pencil. So what I did with this client, she came to me and we found some personal stories on why she was so committed. Um, It's called what I call in my book, The Message of You. And we found these stories. And one of the stories was about her client. And that's why I say everybody needs to have, when they speak and on their website, a mess to success story of their client, how they took a client from mess to success. And she talked about this woman and her, whose husband died and she didn't have, you know, his passwords, nothing. She was totally bewildered. And the accountant, my client took her under her wing and made her really successful. And, and then she related to personal story when her own father died when she was eight and she became committed to really um, uh, understanding fi- the financial realm of of her life and never trusting anybody else. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, she put these two stories together because that showed her message, which was, I am about empowering you to take responsibility for your retirement. Well, I called her the other day and said, Hey, Becky, are you still speaking? And she said, no. I went, what happened? She said, I can't speak anymore because every time I speak, half the audience wants me to be their accountant (laughs) and I can't take on any more clients. And now what I do is, you know, I have product and I have a site and it's I've had to expand my staff. I've had to move. I can't tell you how many problems this has caused me. Good problems. So we should all have such problems. Okay. so how, how did she develop from a. Un, unimpressive speaker to someone who actually could bring humor into her stories? Well, here's the first step. Make fun of yourself. Everybody else probably is already. Mm. And if if you're not a funny person, inherently funny, um, all you have to do is make fun of how serious you are. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you can do a little thing like if you're really, you know, button up uh, accountant type data engineer type person, you know, just uh, say something like, all right, everybody, I'm going to get a little wild now and loosen your tie and go, oh, is that too much? (laughs) Because then it's okay that you're not funny. You made a joke about it. You go, you know, am I too wild? Um, 
And then you can do things like, yes, I'm so serious. I, I make, you know, Mr. Spock on Star Trek look exciting. You know, just make some jokes about yourself. Because that's the first step. And you can practice this in life. Mm-hmm. You know, um, okay. you could go, next time someone says, hello, how are you? Stop saying fine. It's so boring. Hello, how are you? Fine, hello. Um, well, I guess you don't say hello, how are you? Israel, manishma. <laughs> beseder, <laughs> kol yeah, kol beseder. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> kol beseder. Everybody says the same thing. They lie. So the first step is, um, and we Jews are so good at this, you know, it's kind of kvetching, but, but with funny, you know, hello, how are you? Um, I'm fat. Thank you. <laughs> and they didn't you yeah. notice? Yeah. We're talking with Judy Carter, who actually is very, really the, the perfect person to have on the show here in Israel, because, you know, in Israel, we pride ourselves on on our connection to the Holy Land and our prophets. And she, in fact, literally wrote the Bible. Her book, The Comedy Bible, is a book that I read many years ago, and I got a lot out of it, which is why all of you are thinking, boy, Doug, you must really be holding back your humor now. No, I'm kidding. Though I did read the book, I, I don't think this is, I'm not as funny as I'd like to be, except, Judy, sometimes when I meet with clients and we're talking about something serious, and normally, you know, it's about money and it's about husbands and wives not, not wanting to communicate very well about it. And I try to give people a tool that they can work with because the fact is if they just bang their heads against each other to deal with how they handle their investments or their saving or their spending, they're just going to, you know, walk out in, you know, of separate doors and, and never come back together. Can people use these same tools that you teach in, in daily interpersonal uh, interactions? Yeah, it's really important uh, to joke fairly, because if I went to an accountant and he started joking about my money, I looked (laughs) at your portfolio and, what a joke, bada boom, bada bing, (laughs) (laughs) I would walk out the door, Uh um, because there's appropriate times to joke. So here's the the biggest rule of comedy in the comedy Bible. I love that I'm talking to Israel about a Bible. Yeah, yeah. Because, but then again, everybody in Israel is so funny. You should. I don't even understand why you have a wailing wall. You should have a laughing wall. There's so many funny <laughs> people there. Right? I don't understand. But anyway, but that's the whole thing about um, um, Judaism is that what we Jews, you know, and I can talk about this because I'm Jewish, is is that we 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 understand how to train translate problems into punchlines. We understand that. We, we, we Jews understand that things get so painful that there's a point where it pushes over to the other side. But having said that, you, thing is with, with couples and with relationships, you really can't joke about the other person, mm-hmm. you know, because then it, it becomes emotional abuse. And then you could get sued and Lost lose your money, okay. and what have you. I mean, joke about yourself. That's what I say to people. Mm-hmm. You know, if you want to find a good target, joke about yourself. Everybody probably is already. What are people laughing at behind your back? You know, when you stand up in front of a group, what do people, what do people see? You know, and, and then you might realize that, you know, it's not a receding hairline. It's a punchline. Um, it's it. You have to make a joke about what people see, whether it is your age, or um, you know uh, your um, your weight. Um, you know, make a joke about it. If you have an accent, like I have a client now, I'm coaching. He's from Colombia, and he has the very. I can't even do accents, but he has this heavy, heavy accent. And and I wrote for him a joke. I said, yeah. Uh, I, I want him to say, you know, I've been in America for, you know, like 15 years. You, you're not, not going to believe this, but I used to have an accent. You know? <laughs> and, then, and then everybody laughs uh-huh. because when he gets on stage, everybody's going like, that guy, what is, where is he from? I can barely understand him, you know. <laughs> and, and then he gets a laugh. Now, here's the thing. When you get a laugh, it's okay that you're, you know, it's okay that you're, you're, you're fat, you're old, you're, everything's okay because mm-hmm. you've transformed it. And now, wow, now you have the power to take an audience wherever you want to take an audience. And I mean an audience in terms of, you know, whether 
um, you're a professional speaker, you have to speak, but everybody has to speak at a, you know, wedding or Sometime, a right. sure. business meeting, you know. A bris, you can, a lot of good jokes to make at a bris. Oh, <laughs> yeah, don't make the Moya laugh because that <laughs> could really have a disastrous effect on someone's future. Okay. All right, so let's say that you're, we're, we're, we're running low on time, but one of the things that, Judy, you are, I think, really known for is not just that you yourself are a fantastic speaker and, and comedian, but that you really can train people to come up with, with humorous ideas, not you know, beyond the idea of, well, just you know, make fun of your receding hairline, which I did note is interesting you chose that as the topic of today's discussion. Oh, I uh, just saw your picture. Oh, I'm so sorry <laughs> about you. But, <laughs> I was uh, an example. What, what tool do you want to leave our listeners with today that maybe when they, they stop listening, they'll say, you know, let me see if I can do that. Okay, okay, perfect, perfect. List of three. So let's say you've got like a lot of points, a data points to make that are boring people to death. Make the third one funny. It's called the list of three. So the first thing, the, it, the first two set up a pattern and then the last one breaks the pattern and makes people laugh. So let's just like, like for instance, oh, but you have to go into it seriously. You can't like go tip it off. I'm telling a joke. You go, wow, it's a serious world out there. We've got uh, bombing. We have terrorism. Kim Kardashian is a mother. It's scary. <laughs> so, so, you know, it's like bump, 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 turn. Uh, boy, you know, there are, there are some subtle tips. You want to try this one, Doug? There's some subtle tips to know that your relationship is over. Subtle tips, like you're not talking, you know, so much over dinner. You're no longer cuddling at night. And last one, you got one? She doesn't like the old John Belushi albums that you like? <laughs> That's still subtle. <laughs> so you want to go subtle, subtle, obvious. So uh, you she want came to you go... with a baseball bat. and uh... right, right, she hit you with a baseball bat. Good, good. She, uh, she issued a restraining order against you and her boyfriend has moved into uh, your bedroom. Now you're getting a little personal with me. I wish you'd stop. <laughs> you must have read, read about me on Wikipedia. No, I'm kidding. Uh, All is well, thank God. <laughs> yeah. All right, no, but I think that's a great tool, the, the, uh, the steps of three. And the fact is, for, for people who have actually sat in my office, that's, that is something I, I learned as well, also from reading a lot of your stuff, um, that I do think it helps sometimes because you do have to address points one and two in a serious conversation. It's not that you're saying they're not serious. It just helps to lower the stress level in a conversation. And as money is often a very stressful conversation, it's great to have some system that allows you to lower the stress and then just get to work. I think that that's a really super point. Yeah, and my, you know, the biggest tip is don't try and be funny. It just works as, that, when people try and be funny, that works as well as going on a date and trying to make someone love you. Mm -hmm. It's, you end up just to be annoying and single. So, so what you need to do is, is, you know, have, have some good content, but try this list of three. And by the way, in my new book, The Message of You, I lay out um, some comedy formulas, because comedy is a formula in this book that aren't for people wanting to be stand-up comics, but are for people who want, when they speak, want to be entertaining and make people laugh. All right, so let's leave it at that. So tell us, Judy, in the last few seconds, how can people follow you, get your new book as well as your old books? Oh, go to judycarter.com, J-U-D-Y-C-A-R-T-E-R, judycarter.com. I'll send you for free an MP3 file of, you know, um, some speaking tips, also the first chapter of my book. And you could see if you love it. Of course, you love it. Of course, Why not? you will. All right. And if you don't like it, you can email it back to her for free. <laughs> I didn't say that. All right. But it was okay. All right. I'm actually looking at the site now. It's very easy to sign up. It's actually a great website packed with fantastic information. And we'll put a link to that at the show notes of today's Goldstein on Gelt show at goldsteinongelt.com. Judy Carter, thanks so much for your time. Toda Rabala Hitrog. You've been listening to the Goldstein on Gelt Show with Money Maven Doug Goldstein. Doug's weekly radio show is heard around the world. And if you miss it, you can download the podcast at www.goldsteinongelt.com. The Goldstein on Gelt Show gives you up-to-date financial ideas so you can get on the path to financial freedom. If you'd like your questions answered on the air or off, send Doug an email to doug at profile-financial.com. 
It's your money for your future. So join Doug every week to build your wealth on the Goldstein on Gelt Show.